The era of audio and videotapes is long past, as well as the equipment used for their playback. Some people have been collecting numerous reels and tapes over many years, but eventually they all ended up in attics or basements where they shriveled and demagnetized, and in the end they became worthless. But many people were still saving them as they have put a lot of money into them. However, people were changing along with their age. The technology was advancing, new equipment was invented. The shells were finally relieved of bulky accumulated stuff as people moved on to a compact digital format. Laziness came to humans faster than a modernized and reorganized period of modern radio electronics. Now we sit at the computer or near a stereo system for hours. We fall asleep right there and we do not make any effort to stand up so as to change a reel or a tape. One mouse click or a push of a remote control button will suffice for a large volume storage device to execute any of our commands. However, some music lovers and amateurs of magnetic tape carriers still have old reel recorders. Some also have videotape recorders which are actually not that old. We got used to them as we exchanged tapes with our friends, recorded movies from TV. We also had to fix them quite often as they were often subject to an excessive wear. We would fix them and then break again, protect against omnipresent frolic children, hide them and they take out again, wipe off the dust and turn them on. But still, what does the videotape recorder look like on the inside? And why do they break? Here we have Panasonic SD450 model. Let's open the lid, take out the videotape drive and see what it looks like on the inside. Here is the electrical part. As a rule, everything was okay here, but for the power supply unit. Voltage irregularities in the network would spool the supply unit. First of all, this concerned its primary circuit. But the repair works were simple and inexpensive. Here is the videotape drive. It caused most of the problems. However, with the same fault. Japanese experts have done quite a job here. There is a solid metal frame with numerous well-made components. Here is the head assembly on which the tape rubbed continuously, sometimes in a crumpled state. Here is the capstan, also called master flywheel. Along with a pinch roller, it set the tape in motion. Here are gears and friction mechanism. This is all clear. A program plank. This one caused all the problems. It would break into several pieces. A programmer or a mode selector switch controlled all actions of the mechanism. Dirt accumulated on its operating pad and caused program faults. This is the input engine. It set in motion all levers, the program plank and even loaded the tape. Here was the main troublemaker on its axis, which caused breakage of the whole mechanism. This is the so-called bush. It would be replaced first and then the rest of the components. The mechanism was complex and expensive. Now everything is simpler and cheaper. All components are disposable now. If it breaks, you just throw it away. And of course it is nice when the device is reliable and durable and has an outstanding design and quality.